If it comes uh, to the COP21 and what I would like to see replicated on the global scale, this would be energy trading system. Because if we can use market mechanism to establish the fair carbon price, then I think we'll be doing big service uh, to, the, to the mankind that we actually found a way how to justly price the carbon and it would really spur the innovation and all the energy and economic transition we need so much in this area. Most dramatic, and that is from the light of Paris, that we want to bring to the people is you no longer have to make plans, you have to start implementing the plans. And that is our team for Paris, with all the negotiations that still have to be uh, uh, have to be rolled out in the coming weeks, and they are going to be very complicated and very difficult. We are confident that the INDCs, the policy pledges we have today on the table, are a remarkable difference that is not comparable to anything that has been done before, because now today we have the INDCs from Europe, of course, from the United States, but more importantly from the emerging economies, and that marks a remarkable change. So all those interested into the INDCs may also be interested in the lessons that uh, we were drawing up in our book, and it is also with that in the back of our mind that we were writing up in, again, in a way that is non-specialist, non-jargon, bringing forward the main messages of how the European experience uh, developed over the last uh, decade. Policy is about the possible rather than the optimal. One of the interesting lessons of, that is recounted in the book is that what is possible in policymaking terms evolves over time. Things such as the greater degree of harmonization of allocation or the registry management in the ETS is a good example of how uh, we've learned together. Uh, and what was perhaps not possible at the outset, it becomes possible later. And I think that's uh, a lesson which indeed would apply to many areas of policy making.